Hello, my name is Holly Croft. I am an Associate Professor of Information Science at Georgia College and State University in Milledgeville. And this presentation is co-presentation with my colleague, Jolene Cole, Professor of Information Science at Georgia College and State University. So we're gonna start off today describing our setting a little bit for you. So we are at Georgia College and State University and we are designated as the Public Liberal Arts University. And just for your reference, we have approximately about 5,800 undergraduates and approximately about 1,200 graduates. We have eight library faculty. We are down a little bit. Normally we have roughly 12, and then our library staff is at seven, which is also currently not our normal staffing levels, but much like everybody else, we are down currently. But that's our setting that we're working with here today. All right, so next we're gonna look at the four credit teaching at Russell Library and a little his history behind how we started doing the four credit on campus. So in 2011, we had the opportunity to create new area B courses. And those were what we call GC1Y, GC2Y. Technically they stand for Georgia College first year, Georgia College second year programs. They are critical thinking courses and the two Ys have like a global overlay to them. And so we've stuck to the GC1Y which are usually freshman, sophomore level courses. A lot of people consider them much like kind of first uh, freshman seminar courses, but these are actual academic credit courses. Uh, they're not how to use the university or type anything like that. So each discipline created their own version of a GC1Y or GC2Y. So the library stepped in and thought it was a good opportunity to start doing for credit. And then we established research in the age of Google, which we started teaching, I believe, in sometime in 2012, and we've been teaching on a rotation ever since, because in 2018, our special collections created the History of Georgia College class, and they've been teaching that, and again, in a rotation with some of the other librarians as well. And then in 2020, the faculty of the library got together and started just throwing out ideas for a information studies either certificate or minor and that's when the conversations really began but at the same time we were creating additional GC1Y classes as well so then in 2022 additional GC1Y classes were added to our rotation which brought us to about four GC1Y classes and then because I guess that we were teaching so many GC1Ys that's when we really started talking about what else can we do with this and so for two years we went back and forth, we created some classes, we developed the proposal, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But in 2022, our information studies minor was officially approved in the spring. Studies is a field that deals with cre the creation, use, communication, and management of information. Information studies is a field that is rapidly developing and expanding as information management skills become increasingly vital to our information-rich society. The minor complements many other major fields of study, enabling students to develop analytical reasoning, research, oral and written communication skills, knowledge of global issues, and information literacy. What is the Cultural Heritage Information Concentration? The curriculum of the Cultural Heritage Information Concentration of courses focuses on the creation, use, communication, preservation, and management of cultural heritage collections at archives, museums, and historic sites. Students participating in this concentration will explore many facets of cultural heritage information and consider the environmental, ethical, political, fiscal, and legal challenges facing cultural heritage professionals. At Georgia College, we don't have um, graduate students who are in an information science program. Those programs are at Valdosta and the one at Clayton that is archival studies. Um, those are the two where you get the degree to become an archivist, a, a librarian. Um, so we did not want to compete with that in any kind of way with this minor. Um, this minor is to give some basically foundational courses to students who have an interest in the fields um, and also museums and um, working at maybe national heritage sites. So this would give them something to take before they went to graduate school and pursued further education in the field. 
So to backtrack just a little, when we're thinking about creating the minor, and again, when we first started, we were thinking, are we going to do a minor? Are we going to do a certificate? And we ended up settling on the minor, which just worked well for us here at Georgia College. It may be different depending on where you are, what you may be more comfortable doing. But for us, you know, we, first we looked at the USG requirements for the minors, and just so we all have a basic foundation of like what we're working with, a minor for the USG must contain 15 to 18 semester credit hours of coursework with at least nine hours of upper division coursework. Courses are taken to satisfy area A and E cannot be used for the minor. However, area F courses that are part of the core could be used as part of the minor. And so that's just some just general for all of us that would apply that's within the USG. All right, so when we were looking at Georgia College, we have a particular curriculum approval process, much like other universities would have. And so for us, this is what it looked like on campus. Originally, programs that are created should be have input, obviously, from their academic program faculty. So that is when our librarians got together and we started discussing our possibilities. We also, I mean, they have the little check mark here that has a program representative. Well, the check, of course, the USG guidelines for information about any of these kind of things that we did. So that was me. I went in, I read the USG guidelines repeatedly, and I checked with people on campus. I worked a lot with our registrar and our SACS liaison to make sure that I was doing what we need to do and staying within line. So we're going to count that as our little block there. Then the program, any changes in a proposal, um, they must go through all levels of your college governance. So when we're looking at that, that was when we're, the, we're a little odd, right? We're the library, we're the archives, and we don't function quite like an academic discipline. We don't have that set up like the arts and sciences would or our college of education. So a lot of for us was kind of creating that process at the same time. So of course, there was a lot of back and forth for us. What worked for us, we are a, obviously, like you've seen earlier, we are a smaller faculty. So our, we have one college review, what you would call the college for the library. Um, and in arts and sciences, for example, they have a department that check off, then they have a curriculum for the college at the arts and science level, and then it goes on. So we kind of almost skip a step because we kind of do it at the same time. So our faculty, all the library and archival faculty look at the courses and then we go through just an approval process at that end and then our dean signs off on that. And then that's when it goes and it gets entered into what we have, the GC online curriculum management system. Of course, other universities have a very similar process. And then administrative staff will route that proposal to what ours is, either the general education committee the Graduate Council or the University Curriculum Committee. And so for us, it was the University Curriculum Committee that took a look at the minor proposals. And then after the Curriculum Committee looks at and reviews the proposal, of course, they will invite somebody from that academic department, which was both me and Holly. Uh, we got to go to the meeting and discuss the proposal with the group. And it went extremely well better than I thought. I thought there would be some conversation, some feedback, um, and maybe even some edits we need to do, but it went through really well. It was really well received. I kind of chalked that up to making those connections too prior to going to one of these meetings. I had a lot of conversations individually with people that were on the committee. Again, the registrar, our SACS liaison, all sit on that committee as non-voting members, so they were a they were helpful in kind of preparing us for that step. I also gave a lot more than you would think to do. So I looked at other examples from other departments that proposed minors, and they gave a blurb. And I mean, it was a paragraph blurb of a minor that they wanted to create. And Holly and I, uh, we did a whole lot more than that. We, our proposal ended up being, we still wanted to be brief because we know people don't want to look at it, um, but we had about three pages really detailing what we can offer, why we're offering it, just so we could kind of prevent the questions that we knew were inevitably coming because we're the library. And so we really just wanted to make sure that we did that, and I think that helped the proposal go through smoothly. And then 
After you do all that and you get the initial uh, verbal kind of approval during the meeting, then they do kind of the back end kind of things uh, and it gets moved up into the, I think it goes the, uh, to the provost and then it'll go on to the president for the final official approval. Now, I will say we've had some back and forth and I've been talking to other institutions there's a line in USG that implies that if you do not have a major under your belt already within your department, that the Board of Regents like, need to sign off on that. Um, apparently different universities look at that differently. So again, you may get maybe some pushback on that level. We were fortunate enough to allow to just continue. So it is what it is. So you may find out differently, but we are thrilled with the approval process. We found that it went pretty smoothly for us. We do have, obviously, we are considered faculty, so that helps in all this conversation as well. So you, those are things you need to consider when you um, determine what you want to do. One, authority is constructive and contextual. Distinguish authority, recognize that privilege influences one's perception of authority, and identify the role bias plays in this process. Two, information creation is a process. Demonstrate the ability to be information creators by creating, writing, and orally communicating about information in our global society. Three, information has value. Identify the value and ethical use of information in academia and within a democratic society. Four, research is inquiry. Demonstrate persistence, adaptability, and reflection as components of research inquiry. Five, scholarship is conversation. Demonstrate the ability to communicate and dissect complex issues regarding the historical, current, and future information landscape. Six, searching is strategic exploration. Recognize that the relevance and value of information will vary depending on the needs and nature the research being done. Seven, Digital humanities. Develop a familiarity with digital humanities and become more attentive, critical, and reflective users of digital tools, technologies, and spaces by understanding that all technologies are complex, socially constructed, and political. All right, so next we're going to take a look at our courses and what make up the minor. So for us, we started out looking at some of what we wanted to be our required courses, and then we also developed some electives. And keeping in mind, other than about two of these courses, these were all created from scratch within the last two years in order to develop the minor. And so our introductory uh, to information studies is required, and so is history of information, which is very much, I mean, if you think of the history of the book, and just as a uh, note, when we started all this, I had no clue on how to, who develops the prefects and where they come from, and apparently we could just create that. So I don't know if that'll be the same at other universities, but that's how it was here. And so now we're going to look a little bit at our electives and let ta Holly talk about her courses for a sec. Most of my courses fit within the cultural heritage information concentration. I have one that does not, the politics of information. Um, this class is important to me because it really more than the politics of information is more the economics of information, but the name didn't sound as good, so I went with politics. Um, but it looks at how information is always filtered before it gets to the population um, and why this is. So the, the filters that we have um, that come from different levels of uh, authority um, within the society. Um, and so that um, is the only course, like I said, that I have that is not within the cultural heritage information concentration. The others that I created are cultural heritage informatics, which if you um, have seen some of the library schools around the United States have started creating cultural heritage informatics concentrations um, for specifically folks who are interested in more gallery and museum work. Um, this class is the basics of what that is, and um, it does cover archives um, in this uh, minor as well because we don't have an archives minor, um, so it fits there. Um, 
cultural heritage versus mother nature is one of mine um, that looks at climate change and its effect on uh, cultural heritage sites. Um, and then those are mine. And now Jolene. All right. So the additional electives that we have, um, my big one that I created for the program was um, who lives, who dies, who tells your story, archives and collective memory. And so we're going to be exploring that, that big concept of who decides what is kept and what is not kept in our historical record and just exploring that through hopefully some fun different ways. Obviously, we're going to look at like Hamilton. Um, I'm a big Outlander fan, so we're going <laughs> to look at Culloden and the battle and things like that and try to like gauge their interest that way. And then I also had two courses. One was from our director, Dr. Chandra Walker, which was Critical Information Literacy, which was formerly one of our those GC1Y courses that I mentioned. And then I had an information in times of crisis. And again, that is, you know, looking at Katrina, looking at wartime, looking at all different types of things, any type of crisis you can consider and the spread of information, how that's done. Obviously, the COVID-19 and that pandemic, that was, I actually was writing that during all that misinformation. And that's what inspired that. And those were moved to the minor. And then we'll have internship, hopefully, opportunities here in the future. And then... Um, I'll just say the cultural heritage information concentration, uh, we do have so suggestions on a pathway for them. So if that's something that they're interested in pursuing, we have some suggested classes that they can follow for that pathway. At Georgia College has been an internship site for several different uh, programs within arts and sciences. Um, we have had practicums for mass communications. We have had capstone students from um, English, um, and we have also had interns from the history department. And yes, those are all basically the same thing, and they all have different words for them. Um, so we would like to, as someone who has been a site supervisor for many, many students at Georgia College and have just really great relationships with these students as they have gone on to grad school and to professional lives. Um, I, I wanted us to be not only the site supervisor, but also the professor of record for our own internship program. Um, not that we won't still take the students from English and from history and from MassCom. They're wonderful and I love them. Um, so now we will just also get to have and host our own. Um, we also thought some other possibilities are the Twin Lakes Library System. Um, the Mary Vinson Library is very easily within walking distance. Um, Georgia's old Capital Heritage Center at the depot is, and you'd have to drive there, but it's only a couple of minutes away. Um, some others that we have not really touched base with, but just in brainstorming that we thought would be good, maybe digital um, things for students might be the Digital Library of Georgia um, or the Georgia Historical Society. So those are possibilities, not ones that have anything concrete, but just in, you know, a maybe one day kind of capacity. All right. So what are our future plans as part of the minor? So one of the things that I'm really excited about is this concept of adding the letterpress lab to our program. So we currently were, um, were we gifted this? No, we purchased. We purchased this. <laughs> All right. So we have a Chandler and Price 10 by 15 letterpress. And it has been in our basement for a few years. And I really want to get that out. I, Holly has been and was way ahead of me on this one. And I've just decided that like we're going to do it. Like I'm going to make this happen, right? And so <laughs> we have <laughs> dreams. Um, we are actually in the process, though, of getting it moved up into the main library area so the students can get access to it. Um, ideally, in our spring offering of the history of information, we will get the students to get some hands-on experience with the press. And then we eventually we would like to either you know purchase some more, maybe we get some donations if we're lucky, but we would really like to make a real functioning letterpress lab and have students have type of experience with all different types of historical printing process. And so that is like our big next steps, I think, for yeah. the project. And I think, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to <laughs> we, that. We do have some possibilities for donations. So this is um, 
fingers crossed, <laughs> something that will come to fruition. Um, but both Jolene and I have taken um, courses up at Rare Book School in uh, at the University of Virginia that dealt with the history of the book and we got to use some of these printing presses. I uh, will also say I got to go to the California Rare Book School virtually this uh, past year and got to take a class in Archives and Climate Change with Eric Tansy, um, which influenced another one of my courses that um, will be offered in this minor. So I can't say enough about the both the Rare Book School and the California Rare Book School. Um, they, they have given me so many thoughts that swirl around this brain and uh, but that also is where the idea for the letterpress lab came from and uh, I don't know that we'll ever get super adventurous and build our own Gutenberg press like one of the guys who teaches history of the book but you never know with us <laughs> So yeah, we, we have some dreams. So hopefully yeah. we, we see those future plans play out. At least we have a short-term plan, which again is getting that established for our current courses. Um, at least get one-time experience. And if we get really far, we're hoping, I mean, I'm hoping that we can actually have um, an actual letterpress class. That would be amazing. So like that would be, yeah, that'd be quite impressive. So, you know, future plans. And I will say to the ongoing things that not necessarily future plans, but we are not a department that offers a major. We don't just have students here who are information science students. So we do a lot of recruitment. And so that's a just continuing for us. We're going to continue to recruit from mostly arts and sciences, but um, there are some possibilities beyond arts and sciences. We use the GC1Ys as a good uh, stepping stone. Um, uh, particularly that history of Georgia College where they spend so much time in special collections with our materials. Um, at the end, I've had students every single time ask me, what else do you teach? And before this, it was, well, I don't teach anything else, but now we do. Um, so <laughs> this hopefully is uh, something that will continue to help bring students in. And the marketing takes more than you think it's going to. And then, uh, so it's not under future plans, but that's just a continuing thing that we'll keep doing. Okay. Part of our presentation today, we're going to answer questions live. Um, but if you have any that don't get answered today, you can reach both of us. Um, our emails are on the screen. That's holly.croft at gcsu.edu or Jolene Cole at gcsu.edu. Um, I'm looking forward to your questions. Thanks so much.